Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to take a look at brake pads and rotors and compare the wear patterns of a good quality set to a poor quality set. If you have followed any of my previous videos, you know that the 1967 Mustang project has what I consider to be very low quality brakes on the car currently. These were a very bargain setup of disc brake conversions from CJ Pony Parts that came with very obviously low grade Chinese pads, rotors, and calipers. Now, I've already done a video complaining about the quality and fitment and everything else about that set, but I don't want to throw away all these things that I paid good money for until they're actually worn out or they get to a point where I just can't stand them anymore. To this end, the car has seen probably 10,000 miles, maybe a little bit, little bit less, on these brakes and rotors, and I thought this would be a good time to compare what I consider to be low quality components to high quality components. And for this comparison, I'm not going to go somewhere crazy and compare the really high-end Willwood set setup on my 240Z. Instead, what we'll look at is the retrofit kit from StopTech that I used on the Honda S2000. Now, the Mustang has less than 10,000 miles probably of kind of back and forth commuting, driving, as well as some back road spirited driving, but nothing super aggressive. Whereas the Honda S2000 has seen several autocrosses, a hill climb or two, has seen a lot of spirited back, back road driving, as well as maybe three to five times as many commuting miles as the, S2, as the Mustang has. So logic would dictate that the Mustang should be in much better condition as far as wear life on the components than the S2000. But let's go ahead and take a look at it and see if that's true. Right now, the shop as well as the car is a total mess. The car's been being driven a lot to try to get miles on it so I can get the engine broken in, but it's been pouring down rain so it's covered in mud. And my shop is covered in all kinds of half-started projects because I am not able to finish any of them because I'm missing either parts or ran into problems. So rather than moving all of my partial projects and undoubtedly losing parts, we will only focus on what I can film easily, which is the front driver side of this car. We will compare the same wheel on the S2000, but without being more scientific about it, we can't really show a huge comparison of the quality. All we can show is potential wear differences or quality differences at a very macro level. If we were taking this more seriously, we would bust out calipers, we would compare brand new equipment from each manufacturer to the amount lost on the used equipment, we would compare uh, deflection and warping of the rotors or any of those sorts of metrics. But really for right now, all we care about is, is there any major obvious difference between what I consider a low quality brake pad and rotor matching versus a high quality brake pad and rotor matching? After all, remember, these OEMs matched this material to this material on the rotor and pad and sent them here. This is not a mix and match setup, so you would expect them to be the best matching they could possibly come up with. So let's go ahead and get the wheel off and take a look. we can see that there are some issues. So there are streaks along the rotor surface where the rotor has been worn unevenly. We can also feel, as I turn this, a high spot in the rotor where it's contacting a pad as it comes around, which is telling me that the surface of the rotor is no longer flat this way either. So it's got grooves dug into it across the face as well as potentially being slightly warped. If we come in here nice and close, you can really see the streaking on the surface of these rotors. And you can get a little bit better feel for just how deep it really is in the reflections. If we come around here, we might also be able to see how much material has been lost on the pads themselves down in there which is quite a lot given how much material they've taken off of these rotors. So for a situation here where we've got a rotor losing this much material and taking this kind of damage, I would assume that you had really aggressive pads that were scarring the surface and doing this, but it looks like they're both stealing material from each other. So they're actually probably similar in hardness, just extremely poor quality. I mean, the fact that 
perfectly installed brakes have this much streaking after some basic driving is really concerning to me. It might be something due to the bizarre nature of the drilled and slotted surface on such a lower quality casting. I'm not really sure. I didn't measure them when they came out of the box to find out if they were perfectly flat or if they're high spots, but it's very possible that this material having the drilling and slotting is what's actually damaged the pads to cause this scoring across the surface. In any condition, this is a really bad result for brake pads that haven't seen any track use. Let's go ahead, button this car back up and get the S2000. Because I was over optimistic how thin walled my socket was, I'm going to have to remove the cap again before I can go get the S2000. Now that we're up close and personal with the S2000 rotors, you can see some streaking that's actually some surface rust from when we just washed the car and moved the car in here. The pads streaked it around a little bit. But as we move around it, you can see that there actually isn't any depth to it. It's basically just a mirror finish, but the streaks are just a discoloration. If I took a, something to polish them off, they'd probably just come right off. They're not actually gouges in the surface. In fact, you can see where the brake pad was sitting when the car was being washed right there, left its little outline. So ultimately, having many, many more miles and a lot of hard miles, the pads and rotors from this kit, which I think were about 200, 300 and some dollars, have almost no wear and damage and certainly nothing to the extent of what the damage was on those components on the Mustang. The Mustang will definitely not last as long as these will. These, even being raced, may last, oh, I don't know, another year or two. And the components on the Mustang, I'll probably get rid of this fall. They're just that bad off. So that gives you a pretty good idea of just the difference in the quality of material for a wear component and the difference it can have on how the component wears. If anything, I think I would probably be more concerned just with the general uh, wheel bearings and stuff on this just because those are original Honda components and I didn't replace those with the brake system so I might want to check into those especially if it's going to be being raced. Having compared now the stop tech to the no name on the Mustang we have a pretty clear indication of why it matters even in quality of things that are meant to be disposable and wear items such as pads and rotors. Now the Mustang has had very easy miles put on it compared to the S2000, but I am not confident that those brakes are gonna last past the fall. I'll be replacing them with a different brand for sure, and at that same time replacing the caliper as well, because there's no way I trust that no-name caliper to last very long either. Now, the StopTech kit on the S2000 had the benefit of going on with OEM calipers, but even so, you can see the better quality right out of the gate with just how well it's been wearing having seen hill climbs and autocrosses, hard weekend driving in the mountains, as well as daily driving in city and freeway. The car has seen probably five times as many miles as the, S as the Mustang has, but the S2000 has none of the wear that it does. So ultimately, I knew they were lower quality on the Mustang, and I just wanted to see how low quality they were when I installed them. And now that I'm getting near the end of my testing, as soon as I've lost the last little bit of confidence I have in them, I will finally scrap them and replace them with something else. Now, I don't know exactly which brand I'll go with. I've had good luck with Willwoods in the past, but I might try out another brand on this car just for comparison's sake. So if you have a recommendation on ones you would like to see me try out, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.